Hi, I'm Brian Jensen. I'm with UW Extension's Integrated Pest Management Program. And I'd like to spend a few minutes with you talking about some of the occasional insect pests on alfalfa. I would recommend that for more current recommendations, you go to our learning store, which has a publication titled Pest Management in Wisconsin Field Crops. If you want to search for that specific publication, just a simple search for A3646, the publication number should bring you right to that publication. We'll talk about the occasional insect pests on alfalfa. We have another video for alfalfa, alfalfa weevil and potato leaf hoppers, but why cover the occasional insect pests? They're always out there. We always see them, and occasionally, sometimes, they can be problematic. By occasional, we'll talk about uh, P. aphids, spittle bugs, plant bugs, both the tarnished and alfalfa plant bug, and finally, we'll wrap up with the alfalfa caterpillar. We'll start with P. aphids first. They're occasionally a pest. Rarely do they become a pest above the economic threshold. They can be found in all cuttings of alfalfa. To identify them, they are a small, soft-bodied insect, about an eighth of an inch long. They're generally pear-shaped, and they can be either green or rose-colored. Here's a picture of P. aphids. We have both the rose-colored one and the green-colored one. They are very slow-moving uh, as compared to a potato leaf hopper that we have in the upper left-hand corner. You can uh, pick out some of the antennae, but they are very small and thread-like. Again, only about an eighth of an inch long and soft-bodied. Damage from P. aphids, they have piercing sucking mouth parts, meaning they extract plant sap. They do stunt alfalfa, but from a, a field-wide um, uh, symptom, it's hard to tell what stunting is. Another uh, symptom of potato leaf hopper, or excuse me, P. aphid feeding, is they do secrete honeydew. Sap from alfalfa is very high in sugar, but what P. aphids need is more of the nitrogen, so they have to excrete some of those sugars, and um, they do that on the plant. Uh, it's not considered plant damaging, rather, and it can turn uh, darker black with, uh, because of saprophytic molds, but for the most part, that honeydew secretion is not considered uh, plant damaging. To scout for potato, uh, excuse me, P. aphids, we would suggest that you walk a W-shaped pattern within the field and at five different areas stop and take 20 consecutive sweeps in each of those five areas for a total of 100 sweeps. The economic threshold for P. aphids is a minimum of 100 per sweep. If you reach that quote economic threshold, I would look at other plant health problems, for example, what other insects are feeding on that stand of alfalfa? Are there other disease, uh, other plant diseases? Uh, are there other drought or other complicating factors that would make me want to spray? If my plant health is just fine and I'm at 100 per sweep, I probably would not spray. But if I had other uh, symptoms, uh, other insects feeding, uh, other plant diseases, or I was in an extended dry period, then I would want to uh, spray at 100 P. aphids per sweep. There's a lot of other natural enemies of P. aphids, and that's the, probably the primary reason why P. aphids are not a huge problem in alfalfa. Here we see is a, an individual P. aphid that's been killed by a fungal pathogen, and we can see in that halo so, some of the mycelium from that, that fungal pathogen. And in, in this next slide, we do see a P. aphid, although uh, more of a tan color. That's from a parasitic wasp that has laid an egg inside that uh, P. aphid and that larvae is feeding. We'll take just a couple minutes to talk about metal spittle bugs. They are, at least the adults are not a pest on alfalfa. Sometimes the, uh, the nymphs can be, 
but it's it's the exception to the rule. But I think what people see is the spittlebugs in the alfalfa, and they assume there are problems. So let's cover them briefly so that we can uh, understand them a little bit better. The adults are a quarter of an inch long, and they do jump. And sometimes well, that's where the confusion is with spittlebugs and potato leaf hoppers. The adult spittlebug has uh, several uh, various type of markings, and they can also be brown or black. Here's a picture of a uh, adult metal spittlebug, about three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch long, and again, kind of a brownish in color, sometimes a little darker black, and various different types of marking on the back. Here's the spittle mass from a nymph uh, spittlebug. I think they secrete that spittle mass to help protect them from other uh, uh, parasites and predators. And here is a, spittle, a spittlebug nymph that has less left that spittle mass. They do, they can cause some damage to alfalfa, but you need at least one spittlebug per stem to cause any economic problem. More of the concern from people, I think, is they see this small green wedge-shaped insect and they confuse it with uh, uh, potato leaf hoppers. One easy way to distinguish between the two is metal Spittlebug is only a problem on first crop alfalfa. Maybe you might see a couple on second crop alfalfa, but by that point in time they have uh, pupated and finished up and they have left alfalfa. But the potato leaf hopper is only, in second crop, is only just initially starting to migrate into alfalfa from the, the, uh, the other states around the Gulf of Mexico. Let's talk a little bit about plant bugs, and we have two species, the tarnished plant bug and the alfalfa plant bug. Their damage potential is similar, so we, we group the two species together when we talk about plant bugs. And our economic threshold is based on both tarnished, on the numbers of both tarnished and alfalfa plant bugs that we count together. Plant bugs are found on first crop alfalfa all the way to our final or fourth cut alfalfa. Tarnished plant bugs are about a quarter of an inch long in the adult stage. And they're kind of a, a, a oval in appearance and brown with light yellow markings on the back. The nymphs are much smaller. And the later instars will have four to five black dots on the, the wing covers. The alfalfa plant bug, the adult, is about three-eighths of an inch long. They're green, but their wings are transparent, and on those wings, there will be some geometric uh, uh, markings. The nymphs, the early instars are lime green, sometimes a very faint orange in color, but the late instars are always lime green. Here's a picture of the adult alfalfa plant bug about three-eighths of an inch long. These are the wings with some of those uh, geometric shapes I was talking about. They are quite mobile. They'll fly away or run very fast compared to the P. aphids, which are, are, can be about the same color, but they are very, very slow moving. Here's a picture of the immature alfalfa plant bug. Yeah, it doesn't have wings, just the wing pads at this point in time. So they're that solid lime green color. And but you'll see very stout antennae on them compared to a P. aphid. Here's a picture of a tarnished plant bug adult. They're about a quarter of an inch long. Generally, a, the background color is dark brown, but there will be some yellow markings on the back. You'll also notice on the uh, plant bugs and plant bugs in general, very stout uh, antennae, and they are quite mobile. The immature tarnished plant bug, again, is oval, and you'll pick out on the later instars, especially the fourth and fifth instars, some black dots on their back. But again, very stout antennae 
compared to P aphids. Life cycle for plant bugs in general. Let's first talk about the tarnished plant bug. They overwinter as adults and they have two generations per year. The alfalfa plant bug only overwinter as eggs and also with tarnished plant or with the alfalfa plant bug rather there are two generations per year. The nymphs can be easily confused with P. aphids. I mentioned that a little bit before but to help you identify between the two plant bugs are very very mobile in the sweep net where P. aphids are can be smaller but they are very very slow moving. Plant bugs like potato leaf hopper and P. aphids do cause stunting so stunting is not diagnostic of plant bugs only. Um, there is some quality loss with plant bug feeding but our symptoms that we see in, in the field are a puckering and distortion of the leaf. There is no discoloration of the leaf tissue from plant bugs. Here's a picture of plant bug feeding. You can kind of pick out that uh, uh, puckering, crinkling of the leaf. Uh, here's a little distortion. That's also a, a symptom of plant bug feeding that can kind of uh, to some degree look like a, uh, an insect has fed on that, but that's part of that puckering and distortion of the leaf caused by plant bugs, both nymphs and adults. To scout for plant bugs, you scout for them the same that you would for P. aphids and for that matter, uh, potato leaf hoppers, but do count both species as plant bugs, that is to combine both tarnished and alfalfa uh, plant bug counts as one. Economic threshold for plant bugs is when the alfalfa is less than three inches tall, spray when you get three plant bugs per sweep. When the alfalfa is greater than three inches, then it's five plant bugs per sweep. We'd like to finish up with the alfalfa caterpillar. Again, it's an occasional pest on alfalfa. We do see it in alfalfa just about every summer. They do overwinter in the state, and there's approximately two generations per year, but that depends on our summer weather. The adult is that sulfur-colored butterfly you see uh, floating around alfalfa fields, ditch banks, and things like that. And the adult do no damage to alfalfa. It's only the larvae. And to identify the larvae, they are a very dark, velvety green in color, they do have a lighter green head and they will always have a white stripe down each side of the body. So there are potential pests on second and third and even fourth crop alfalfa. We scout for them the same that we would for uh, plant bugs, P. aphids and, and potato leaf hoppers and that is five sets of 20 uh, consecutive sweeps. The threshold for alfalfa is to spray when you have 10 alfalfa caterpillars on average per sweep. Here's a picture of what the uh, alfalfa caterpillar looks like. A, ve a very velvety green color, a, uh, uh, also a, uh, a green head, and that will distinguish them from alfalfa weevil. All alfalfa weevils have a jet black head, and alfalfa caterpillars have a white stripe down each side of the body. They are a defoliator on alfalfa and they'll feed usually from the leaf margin in. We typically don't see a lot of holes in the leaf from alfalfa ca caterpillar feeding. We always find alfalfa caterpillars in the state each and every year um, but the reason they're not a key pest on alfalfa is as their numbers increase over time they'll get different types of, of diseases and when it's kind of like sending your kids off to school in the fall they all get together they one gets a cold they all get a cold similar type of things happen with insects and especially with alfalfa caterpillar and uh, that is there is a viral disease that goes around and typically once numbers get up to one or two uh, per sweep, 
then you start to see a general population decline because of this virus. That concludes the occasional insect pests on alfalfa. We also have another video on alfalfa weevil and potato leaf hopper. Thank you.